Hello, Kirk Spano. It's uh, Monday, February 1st, 2021. And I'm just going to start with a little macro view before we get into stocks. So I just put out a top growth stocks for a correction. And within the next hour or two, I'll have a top dividend stock for a correction. I actually have all the stocks picked out. I was just putting in the blurbs with the charts. And this one, actually, just to make the point, this one, same thing. You just got to put in the buy zone. Bam. There you go. So tree rings. I'm going to post this as an article uh, just with the PDF copy of this. And what this is, is probably one of the best weekly summaries out there. I spent the $200 a year to get it, 240 220 whatever it is, um, because it makes filtering the information down to yourself, right? The funneling the information to yourself in a way that makes sense, at least that's easy to keep track of just remarkably easy. So he puts all his time into this and, you know, he's got an asset management wing too. I'm using this and I was using Hedgeye. I've recently unsubscribed from Hedgeye just because there's just too much uh, ideology or hubris or something with them that they were getting a lot of things wrong. And I don't necessarily agree with his outlook uh, on the markets. I think he's missing something that's a big deal, which is the psychology. And I don't think he respects what the millennials are doing through Reddit. Uh, what this takes a look at are some of the, the key takeaways from the whole GameStop Sega, which I, I talked about, right? I've talked about why they were doing it, how they were doing it. But it's just mathematical. I have an article coming up, uh, hopefully tonight, but probably tomorrow. And the Macro Monday, probably on Tuesday that talks about why it happened and how it happened. You know, somebody brought up the potential for a silver squeeze. You've pretty much seen that almost play out at this point. Uh, there just isn't all that much to squeeze on the silver side. And the market is, whatever it is, 40 times bigger than GameStop and AMC and some of those little crummy stocks. So the millennials just have limited amount of money. Uh, for them to go after an elephant like the silver market, I mean... They just don't have the ammo. So the silver market's going to do what it's going to do. Uh, should it be a little bit higher? Sure, probably a little bit higher. But it already rebounded off its bottom. A lot of people were buying silver, oh, I don't know, three, four, five, six months ago, back when you know we were buying the gold miners. And we get a, a shot, you know, we get a share of that by owning the gold miners because they all produce silver as well. So the millennials bought silver stocks and then they went out and bought as part of a two-part plan. So don't tell me they're not trying to manipulate the market, you know, but on the other side uh, of the illegality of that, you know, I, I think there's an interesting ethical uh, argument. In any case, you know, they bought the silver stocks and then they went out and bought silver on the spot market and they bought coins and bullion little silver silver bars. And just like you buy little one ounce uh, gold bars, they're actually pretty cool. Those are hard to trade back in for cash. One, because you have to take physical delivery, then you have to take them somewhere. You're gonna get, get a haircut from whoever buys them from you. And you have to do a physical task. So I think a lot of these millennials just bought silver that they're gonna hold on to for a very long time. And the stock run-ups, I think they're gonna sell those off pay for their silver. Uh, I think it was a bit of a scam to get silver on the cheap. It was a pretty slick move, to be honest with you, uh, but I don't think it's something that will last terribly long because it's just too big of an animal for them to control. In the stock market, we saw what they did to GameStop. Uh, clearly, the stock is not worth anywhere near that much when you base it on uh, the value of, of their revenues, the fact that they're not profitable right now. Now, in a year or in over the next year or two, as, as I said in the article I wrote a couple of years ago, GameStop is going to close a ton of stores. And I've actually already emailed the guy from Chewy. I'm hoping he connects with me on, on, on LinkedIn because uh, he has one of those locked LinkedIn accounts. But I, I have, I subscribe to something that lets me at least send him a message. And I think that GameStop is going to close a whole bunch of stores. They're going to do experiential stores where you go in and you play video games, video leagues, uh, you know, uh, um, virtual reality games in like a little stadium setting uh, with the goggles. 
Uh, they could end up partnering with Oculus or somebody else or, or, or maybe all the major providers of, of the VR goggles. Any of you that have been in New York and near the High Line, you may have stumbled into the Samsung store. I believe that that is the future of the GameStop stores. So they may close five stores, open one like that, have some money in their pocket, have a paid for a store, and now draw in all sorts of people into this gaming place where you have to have a membership to GameStop to get in and play in the league or the tournaments. So it could be very, very interesting. Now, what is GameStop worth? I don't know, somewhere under $100 a, a share, probably close to 30 or 40. Uh, but right now it's a zillion and, you know, it's hard to make money when something's already up a zillion. So in any case, I'm going to post this. I mean, I can't post these very often, but I do have a discount code. So if you want to follow along, um, this is just really one of the best things out there. Uh, but I'll give you a sample to take a look at and you can decide if you want it. But a lot of my macro uh, comes from about eight or nine sources. And this is one of them. Uh, you know, I'm also using Foreign Affairs uh, and Stratfor. Uh, you know, obviously, I read Bloomberg pretty much the whole digital print. Uh, Wall Street Journal, I still get. I've stopped reading the Financial Times just because it's, it's just not worth paying for the one or two articles a week that they have. It's exclusive. So, you know, we'll get that out there. I'll, I'll, and I'll put the code into the article. So plug and play stocks. What I wanted to do for you is put together a top growth stocks list for a correction, all coming out of the plug and play. These all have updated charts. The number one stock I want is MP Materials. Why? Because how often do you get a chance to buy Monopoly? And this stock has been consolidating and any little market hiccup pulls it down into what I think is a pretty legitimate buy zone. Um, you know, it gets down to this first fib level. Could it get down to the very low 20s? Absolutely. But there's pretty strong support right there. Uh, this is where the early uh, adopters, the early believers got in. And this is why I bought uh, Fortress down under 1150. Even though we don't know what the acquisition is going to be, I'll tell you what. I've been studying the financial industry. And this whole thing with GameStop shares uh, not getting traded for a day on certain exchanges, it was because of the settlement process. So think about the settlement process in stocks. So going back backwards to GameStop, the settlement process in stocks um, takes a couple of days. So the stock that you buy or sell goes through a transfer agent, clearing firm, and then to, to the next, next person who bought it or sold it. So your shares don't go instantaneously or come from instantaneously the person you did business with, right? It goes through the brokerages and the clearing firm. And the clearing firm had to hold on to a deposit in case there was a severe price swing. Well, in GameStop and AMC and a bunch of others, there was. So I think with uh, Fortress, and I'll come back to MP in just a second. With Fortress, I think that they're going to end up buying somebody that could have a role in alleviating that. And someone who in one of these financial SPACs is going to take blockchain and they're going to change the clearing process from a couple of days to a couple of seconds. It's going to be a crazy, crazy transformation. So, you know, I think a 2% position in Fortress makes a lot of sense. I'm more than that because I like the people. Um, I'm at like 3% and working my way towards four. You know, I probably won't go to four until I see the transaction. Uh, and the stock starts to move up. So with MP Materials, what are you getting here? Well, you're getting a monopoly. Rare earth metals aren't that rare. There's about to be five mines in America, but the only processing facility that will be online for the next five years is one from MP Materials. And we think there will be another one um, in the southeastern part of the country uh, near two of the mines uh, in, in several years. What are rare earth materials used for? EVs, clean energy, defense, digital, right? All the things that we're talking about being on our barbell. Why is this such a big deal? It's because we were getting all of our rare earths sent that we would mine here at this company's mine, sent off to China, processed there, and then sent back. So it's not that we didn't have rare earth metals the last seven or eight years uh, since Mali Corp closed down. Right, this is Molly Corp's old mine and, and the refurbished facility. 
it's it's that we didn't have a facility to process them. So this is a monopoly in processing the rare earth metals and helping us not be so dependent on China, which is at this point a big deal. So MP materials is my number one target. I want to get them in the middle to lower 20s. And if it doesn't happen, I might just have to bite the bullet and buy them. But this looks like a consolidation zone that's going to break down a little more and then start back up. Over here, you find out why the market's going to get a little tighter. Liquidity is actually leaving the market. But it probably won't leave for good, right? At some point, they just start printing money again. And he actually talks about the process of how they print money. I've talked about it before, too. When, when you read this, this, this tree rings report, you're going to go, wow. Kirk has said all this stuff in the last two years. That's why I sent it to you, because it makes me feel good about me. Come on. It's all about me. All right. Sun Power, number two stock I want to get back into, right? I just said trim it. Well, and then I'm going to drop like $7 at the open today. Now it's only down four uh, for the day. But I think that potential here is still very, very good. I think people are missing what the big potential is. Don't you think the Sun Power cuts a heck of a deal with another big home builder soon? I do. I think that these guys are going to be a big deal with the homeowners. And it's a heavily shorted stock that's already starting to get the attention of that Reddit army. So they may not let it get as cheap as I want it to get. Uh, so if it gets down to around 29, I guess I have to hold my nose unless it's headed straight down. Uh, but their buy zone is pretty clear. And what I want to show you is this is the buy zone. And when you take it backwards, you go all the way back to 2014. And the buy zone over here is lining up with fibs and levels where it chopped before, right? Resistance, resistance, breaks through resistance, but it can't hold it. Resistance, resistance. Then it has that long slump, all the cleaning up of the balance sheet in here, all the capital injections from Total. And then bam, the green energy world finally lights on fire. And then, you know, it just gets bit up because that's what people do. They chase it, they buy calls, they chase it up. So it should come back down into this area, which was the battle zone before. And I think it holds, then it starts going back up. Now, the millennials might not let it get down below here. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see how much change the Reddit army has. Komatsu, you want the ultimate picks and shovels company in the global commodity boom that's about that started to happen already well these are the guys they they merged they actually took over joy global right here in milwaukee right competitor to caterpillar caterpillar bought the other mining company in milwaukee right so we had two of the six biggest mining companies in the world and then komatsu and caterpillar bought them joy global and uh was it harness or was harness or joy global i don't remember um there was actually three in Milwaukee and two of them merged and then Caterpillar bought one. In any case, uh, they eliminated competition. They had a technology and manufacturing capability. They're very well positioned and you get some Japanese uh, exposure, which I think between Berkshire Hathaway and Komatsu, uh, that's pretty good Japanese exposure there. Uh, and by the way, Kathy Wood has been accumulating this stock. So on up days, she's usually the up. Facebook, you know I don't like Zuckerberg, but it's hard not to like Oculus. Take a look at this one. I, I do think there's not really much that can hurt Facebook when it comes to regulation. If they're told to sell Instagram, think about all that money that drops onto them. They probably become a dividend stock and they just turn their attention to streaming, which I think they want to do anyway, which they're already starting to do. Ford, today they had the deal with Google, right? To use their AI, the cloud and the maps. That's a big deal. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't play Apple Music when you're in the car or play Siri, Sirius. But how many of you, regardless of whether or not you have an iPhone, still use Google Maps? And if you've used the Google Assistant and Alexa and Siri, you know that the Google, right? Hey, Google. I wasn't sure if my phone would turn on. You know that that's the best one. It's way better than Siri from uh, Apple and way better than Alexa. So the top technology to go with their fourth industrial revolution technology, these Fords are going to be a big deal. They're going to diversify the company. They're going to unlock real estate value. You just have to keep buying on the dips there. EPR properties we haven't talked to in a while, but weirdly, the Reddit Army bailed these guys out to some extent. Why? Because AMC Theaters is their biggest creditor. 
and AMC stock spiked and they immediately issued shares to raise cash. Now, I don't know that they're going to completely pay back EPR properties. I don't think they are for missed rents, but they're paying them going forward. And once we're vaccinated, and I think really just starts during the summer, because I think that people just go out in the summer, even if only half of us are vaccinated, right? People are going to go to top, top golf. People are, you know, going to start going back to ski hills next year. EPR is an interesting chart. I, I made it longer to go all the way back. Look how, look at that fall off. Now they're going to have to eat some debt up, but everything's pretty much pushed out five years. Uh, there was a money manager on today that was pretty interesting. He said, look, the, the, the near term part of the high yield curve is pretty attractive because most of those companies have made it through COVID. They're going to pay their bills. It's all those bonds, and I've told you this, those bonds that got pushed five and six years out, right, because of the Fed. Those are the companies, those are the zombies you got to watch out for. So this management team at EPR, I mean, they were one of the first companies to, to cut spending. You know, they cut spending in February by a billion dollars today. They, they, as soon as they saw COVID coming before the president, they said, look, we're not going to spend this billion dollars on expanding. We're going to keep it on the balance sheet. We might need it, right? So the stock still fell off a cliff. And I think that, you know, you get back down into here around 30, probably got to buy it. Could you buy it here and, and suck it up? You could, but right. I mean, the charts just don't say it yet. Let, let, let these come down to you a little bit. Spectrum Brands. You know, I think eventually this ends up on the dividend list. And in the meantime, I think you just really need to wrap your head around what this company is. They own all sorts of brands that you use. So go to their website and check it out. And then go around your, your, your house and your garage and your cupboards and your shelves and go, wow, I've got that. And I've got that. I got that. So they streamlined their entire production process, sold off a couple of brands that weren't core. This stock could go really, really high. I mean, they could head all the way up to $190, $200 a share. Take a few years, but they're down, you know, in the 70s, 80-ish right now. I think they're just breaking out. So probably want to get a starter position here soon. And then if it goes back down to 60-ish, buy more. Delta Airlines, I put it at the bottom, right? These are kind of in order of what I how I want them. Delta Airlines, it's at the bottom because the airlines are going to have to face higher costs on fuel, and I think at least through the end of this year, they're not going to be full. Their, you know, their volumes aren't going to be up, right? So they have, they're going to have idled planes for a while. But that lowers the expenses because they don't have to buy more planes from Boeing. So that's bad for Boeing. Um, you take a look at all this and you say, okay, how is this all going to work out? I think what's going to end up happening is the airlines are going to skip a generation of plane buying, which means Boeing's going to have a hard time the next three, four or five years. And that's how they're going to shore up their balance sheet. They're just going to say, look, we're going to use the planes we have, and then we're going to replace them which, with far more efficient models in the middle to end of the decade. That's what they're going to do. And Delta has the best technology, and they have their own refinery for fuels, just in case something pushes oil prices up, a war, taxes, right? I mean, there could be a carbon tax for sure. So I like Delta. It's the only airline I would look at. I would need it to pull back a little bit more, uh, but if you want a rebound play, something a little bit higher risk, but that could really soar, <laughs> really soar for you, uh, I think Delta is one that you put a couple percent in, uh, in a couple of tranches. So let's take a look at the dividend stocks. Lockheed Martin is just one of the best companies in the world. It's right on top of its buy zone now, so we're getting real close. So this is one that you're going to have to monitor day to day now. See, it's down here in this area. It broke through this, you know, this breakdown here, but there's an uptrend. So it's, it's close. I mean, could it go lower than it did in March? I'd have a hard time believing that. I think it's pretty close to what you're going to get it at. Um, and when they start getting into water desalination, when that finally becomes a thing, That'll be a big deal. You'll be seeing literally a trillion dollars in business. A trillion. I'm not I'm not joking. I mean, Lockheed Martin's gonna be one of the three or four or five companies to capture the global desalination market. You know, some of these smaller companies, they don't have what these guys have. So between solar power and the new desalination technology and the fiber that they have, um, you know, 
And, and by the way, we're not going to stop spending on the military. It's just not going to happen. Fortress balance sheet, analog devices, huge potential move in the you know winter and the move to smarter cars. Already there's a shortage of their uh, chips. So you got to buy these guys on any pullback. They're digesting a, an acquisition now, so you should get your chance. Newmont Mining, along with Barrick Gold, two best gold companies in the world. Uh, just waiting for an SP500 pullback because Newmont's a component. Barrick is Canadian. Nutrient, also Canadian. Uh, we got to remember that Potash Corp was up around $100, $110 a share seven, eight years ago. But then they merged with Agrium and they haven't been up that high since. So when you take a look at Nutrien, you go, well, you know, it's already close to an all-time high. No, it's not. Because when you go back here, and it, when it was Potash Corporation, it was up around 100 So it has a long way to go. I don't think you need a big pullback to buy it to the middle 40s. If you get it down to 40-ish, you know, for sure. Look at, look at that chop right there. For sure, buy it around 40-ish too. Oligopolies, monopolies, when you can afford in them, uh, invest in them, you have to, right? Lumen Technologies, I don't think the market is paying attention. I don't think they understand that the value of the fiber is higher than what it's getting valued at, and that the enterprise business is very scalable, right? They don't have, have a lot of input to get output. Big dividend on an improving balance sheet, and they're going to do something with the consumer division. Either they'll cannibalize it and turn it into higher margin business, even if it's a lower number, or they'll sell it off, or a combination of the two things. Cisco, bit of a grandpa stock among uh, tech stocks, but it's the rich one that still works, right? It's a rich grandpa that has a uh, that just likes to go to work. Uh, they're on everything that's connected and have a linchpin role in internet security, which should become more profitable to fight off those malicious commie threats. So I would expect Cisco probably has a big rally in them coming at some point. Probably want to get a, a position in them if you're a dividend investor, because you're probably going to get the kicker of growth. Crown Castle and American Tower, right? We, we highlighted those in the plug and play. They're both leader in cell towers. I don't really like the ETF that's out there, uh, just because I, I really just want these two companies. They're, they're the leaders. Um, the littler companies, I think you have to pick and choose them. Uh, to see if they get consolidated. But these two companies have a lot of the market. I'd have to double check, but it's over half. So, you know, these two companies are both in consolidation patterns, right? They, they built a lot of stuff. A lot of people bet on the come. Now it's chopping. I think that this is probably a pretty smart area to buy. If the market gets really beat up, you got to keep in mind that it could go down to close to 100. You know, if there's some sort of, big correlated correction. Then these four REITs, I haven't put these in yet, but they're similar to plug and play. I don't know that the charts have changed all that much. Vici, Store Capital, Stag, Erstat Biddle, right? Commercial strip malls, commercial strip malls. A lot of them anchored by grocery stores. Then these are just, you know, high growth areas is where they build. Then you have the entertainment with Vici properties and you have industrial with Stag. So you're getting commercial that's undervalued, comes with low operating expenses, anchor tenants. Vici, which is, you know, if you've been to Vegas and want to go back, tell me that you're not going back as soon as you can. And then Stag Industrial, which is taking C and B level uh, industrial properties around the country and converting them into A level properties, because as the supply chains move back, we need more industrial property. So that's one of the reasons Ford will also do well, because Ford there's ready buyers for Ford's real estate. So, you know, I think that if you buy this basket, right, you're going to be in pretty good shape. You're going to have a fat dividend that's over the S&P 500, 3 to 4% probably average. You know, when you figure in Kinder Morgan and AT&T and Barrick has got a rising dividend. You know, if you get that dividend at 3 to 4 range, which is higher than you're going to see the 10-year treasury for a really long time, um, now you get a better interest rate than you would with a bond and you get the asset inflation that's caused by the government printing money, right? So that's why I don't really want any bonds 
Uh, I don't think they're even right for retiree, retired investors. There's a couple of preferreds, a couple of corporate bonds out there. You got to cherry pick them real carefully. There's not a good fund out there, not a single one. There's not a single good bond fund in existence right now. The one place to look is at the short end of high yield, where if you want to buy a high yield bond that's going out for a year or two, you buy a specific one because you understand the company. But the thing is, if you're going to do that, you might as well usually buy the stock. So there's just not much um, in there for bonds. So that's why I think the real estate and, and the commodity linked for upwards of 40% of your portfolio end up being your inflation hedges and your income generators. And then you have your growth stocks that happen to pay a dividend. All right, what kind of questions do we have? I'm going to talk about selling puts on a lot of these tomorrow. And I'm going to change the name of the covered call call because I don't like seeing it. I'm going to call it the option selling call because call is still in the name. Somebody asked about uh, tire companies. I haven't looked into those in a few years, but, you know, Oscar, if you could do a one-page uh, summary report, you know, that would be great. To let us know where they're at. <laughs> well, I'll get around to it otherwise. Yeah, no, I agree. AMT um, has got very good revenue streams. And, and I believe that they have a little bit more exposure. Well, they have more, they're the ones with the exposure in the emerging markets, which is probably where you make the most money. If you're going to choose between uh, Crown Castle and AMT, I think you probably take AMT, um, American Tower, but I like them together. I think it's, I think it's a way to get both pieces, right? You get the part with the international and the part without international. I think it's a good way to diversify to buy them both. You might buy them two pieces of money, right? Two parts AMT and one part Crown Castle. Plug and play article is right on fundamental trends. You're uh, Mike's a fundamental trends guy, right? Member content, sustainable growth, wherever these people are. And they're published, these are published at the start of the quarter. And then we just do updates from there. Really right much there. I already sent out a... Right, so just in case you, you've missed it, updated the website. If you're in rare, you can read anything. If you're retirement income options, everything above. So everything above your subscription level, you can read. So if you're rare, you can just read everything. Then rare will have the dedicated rare articles. Retirement income options will have the re dedicated articles. The option selling, right? Dividend collector, dividend stocks, sustainable growth, growth stocks. You know, not that a dividend collector doesn't want some growth stocks. Chat's working. The memberships are, are working. Every now and then you get this. That's a security feature that I built in. Sometimes it pops up, sometimes it doesn't. And then I added a browser notification on Fundamental Trends. So if you're a member of Fundamental Trends, and I still haven't done all the settings yet, but you should... Let's see if I, I've already had this pop up once. Yeah, it has, it's not popping up right now. I, 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 the cookie is in here, so it's not popping up. But normally you'll get a pop up that says, would you like to subscribe? And it's for our, all the articles. Um, let's see if this ID works. Yeah, yeah and then there will be a bell down here to let you know that there's a, an alert. So every time I publish an article, your browser can tell you that. So I'm automating that so that I don't have to sit there and build an email because there's not a way to do it without building an email. So if your browser can tell you, if you really want to know when I publish rather than just visiting periodically, let your browser tell you. All right, everybody have a great night. I'm going to edit, uh, finish editing the dividend article and get that posted. I'll put them both up on Fundamental Trends tonight. And um, I will try to set up the settings for the browser notification. Tomorrow morning, I have another tech that I'm talking to just to, I want them to scrub the website to make sure everything works. And if you're at margin of safety, you know, they already have a system that sends you an email every time that I pop out an article. I have no idea why WordPress can't do that. I'm looking for a way for that to happen too. There's got to be a way of integrating um, email, uh, MailChimp and, and WordPress. So um, that's one of the things I'm talking to tomorrow uh, with uh, the develop, new developer. So, all right, have a great night, everybody. So the millennials, uh, the Reddit army, which is almost a quarter of the, of the retail trading right now is leveraged at two or three to one, you know, so they're getting a lot more impact than their money 